start. Hello guys, this is Sarnix. In the last video, we learned about the input statement. We learned about the copy sign function, sign of the second, absolute value of the first. We had learned about the factorial function, about the fsum function, and the math by variable. <coughs> In this video, we're going to look at why division is a problem and its solution. Okay. Now, before that, if you remember, last video, I was telling you about pip. Okay. So, in this video, we are also going to take a brief look at pip and what you can do. With it. Okay. So, first, you need to open up a new terminal that is like a command prompt or something. <coughs> then you type in pip. Like for npm, you have, like for node, you have npm. Like that for pip, you have, for python, you have pip. Then you type in the command, like, let's say, mm, uninstall. So, pip, and then uninstall, and in the library's name, like, in this case, pymonk, let's take for an example. Remember, the spelling of the library should be correct. If not, then uh, nothing's going to happen. So, this is going to try and locate pymonk, if possible. And if it is, it's going to ask us if we want to delete it or not. There you go. See, proceed y slash n. We're going to say y, yes, we want to proceed. And it says successfully uninstalled PyMonk and then the version 5.6.0. Now, if you want to install PyMonk again, you can use pip install PyMonk. And this is going to go to pypi.org and install PyMonk from there. Successfully installed PyMonk 5.6.0. If you use pip list, it's going to list all the libraries that you have. So we should see, there you go, PyMonk 5.6.0. Now suppose you're running an outdated version of PyMonk. Then you use pip install and then PyMonk or the name of any library. And then a dash and then a capital U or two dashes and in small letters upgrade. Okay. This is going to try and see if... All the libraries associated with PyMonk are updated or not. If they aren't, it's going to update it. Okay. So, right now I have the decimal library installed. So, I can just use from decimal import and then an asterisk. Check out my previous videos to see what the import statement is and how to use it and stuff. Okay. So, now to access the uh, functions or variables of the decimal library, I could just type in the name of the function I want to use and Python's know, Python will know what I'm doing. So here, if you are importing decimal like import decimal, then you'd have to use decimal dot and then access its other functions. First, let's just give a random variable name like div decimal equals to and then decimal. It's supposed to be used as a function. Okay. And then we pass in a value over here. So let's just type in a random number like 1350. And then the division sign, there is a forward slash. Then another decimal with, let's say, 2.7. Okay. Now, this is going to return an accurate result of the division. Let's compare it with the normal result we would get if we didn't use the decimal library like div. Uh, normal equals to just the normal 1350 by 2.7. Remember the division sign is the forward slash. Then we print a formatted string and in that uh, we can use these curly braces to indicate variable names or expressions. If decimal now backslash n over here is a special character. That is not a slash that is a backslash. Remember the backslash n character means that print the next, the following stuff on a new line, okay? So then we can type in the second division variable that is div normal. So this would print out div decimal in one line and div normal in the other line, okay? See, the first line has a more accurate result than the second line, okay? So the first line has four, Nine nine point nine 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 nine
which is not equal to 499.99, which is not equal to the first line. Now, if you notice, we have an extra space character before the second line. Okay. Now, that's your homework to find out why it is there. So, we learned about the decimal function of the decimal library. We learned about how it is better than the normal division. And we learned about this backslash n which is the new line character okay so today you have two homeworks actually the first one is visit my website the link is in the description below okay that's your first homework and your second homework is find out why before the second line there was a space character okay so like suppose 23 and 12 were supposed to be printed like this 12 and then 23 but why is there an extra space character before the second number okay so that's your homework now if you've seen my previous video you would know that in the last video too i had given you a homework okay what is the use of the exclamation mark first let's just clear out all this there you go then we'll just give We'll just take two boolean values like bool1 equals to true and then bool2 equals to false let's see okay so suppose what we want to do is check if the opposite of bool1 equals to bool2 okay opposite of bool1 if it's equal to bool2 then we print okay otherwise we print no okay so you could use the not operator too, like not bool1 equals to bool2. But instead, since we want to demonstrate the use of the exclamation mark, we use something like this. Bool1. Okay. And remember, the exclamation mark does mean not, but you cannot use it before a boolean to represent the opposite value. You can only use it before an equal to sign to represent if... The number on the left side is not equal to the number on the right side or the value on the right side then do the following stuff okay so in this case if bool one's opposite is not bool two because they are bools they just have two values so if it's not one it's got to be the other so then we print okay okay now over here to print no you could use two ways. You could either use the else statement or the elif statement if you want to check for, like, let's say, some other expression. Here we don't want to do that, so we use the else statement and then we print no. Okay? Now remember, we should see OK being printed on the terminal because yes, bool1 is not equal to bool2. Okay? OK should be printed on the terminal see there you go okay is printed on the terminal now instead of using actually let's keep the exclamation mark and the not operator we should see no being printed because the opposite of bool1 is equal to bool2 instead if we change this to a double equal to sign remember single equal to is assignment double equal to is comparison so if the opposite of bool1 is bool2 there you go we see okay so what did we learn in this video we learned about the decimal library we learned how it is better than python's normal division and we learned the use of the exclamation mark in python okay so what's your homework today visit my website link in the description and why did we see a space character before the second line being printed? Hope you like this video. Bye.